Hello, and welcome to the next video in my Conducting Fundamentals series. We're getting practical. We're going to start looking at how to beat basic time patterns. Two in a bar, three in a bar, and four in a bar. Now, if you imagine watching a number of conductors beating two in a bar, you can easily imagine that uh, they would be doing very different things with their batons, hands and arms. They would not be carbon copies of each other. Part of that is to do with the conductor's physique, part of it to do with individual preferences, but the majority of it is to do with the music itself. One wouldn't conduct, as an obvious example, legato slow music the same as one would conduct staccato, fast music. The music itself gives you a lot of information about how you're going to move your baton and your arms through the air. That being said, there are underneath all the possible varieties of pattern you will see being beaten by conductors, there are underneath basic patterns. And that's what we're going to look at today, being two in a bar. Let's start. OK, here's our baton, and we're going to start with our baton at the top of its field. Uh, now, having used the word field, I don't think I've used that before. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Um, it's as if us conductors have a, an area which is principally here, and it's our field of play. Not quite the same as running around a field to play a game like football, but it is a field within which one plays the game of conducting, the game of music. It's a three-dimensional field, so it exists in more than one plane, in any and every plane that you can possibly think of. In a sense, you could say that the field extends as far as your hand and arm could, uh, could go from side to side, but I'm going to concentrate on this central section, where which is where most of the conducting work is done. So, we start with our baton roughly at the top of that field, which were, won't be any higher than our eye level. Remember that the baton is not pointing directly out, but is a little to the left, and also is not flat this way, but is a little upwards, pointing over the head of the horn section. What we're going to do first is, uh, yes, just let your baton float in the air, is try and feel that your arm also is floating, that it's ready to drop, but it's just staying up somehow in the air. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop the baton and we're going to bounce the tip of the baton up slightly. Something like this. I'll do that again, just move back to the top, and here we go. Now, you might notice when I get to the bottom that I don't bounce directly up again. So I don't do this. Watch that again. But I do this. See, I'm going very slightly out to the right hand side. I'm exaggerating a little bit so you can see that clearly. The second beat, we simply take the point at which we've stopped from the first beat although one doesn't, of course, always stop the beat like that, but we will, just for the moment, take the point we've stopped at and work our way back to the top, something like this. So here's the first one, and here's the second one. First, second. Okay, now, the second beat is not straight. It's very slightly curved. Here's the first one. I'm going to exaggerate quite a bit, and here's the second beat. It goes like that. I'm just doing the second one a little slower so you can see the curve. I'm exaggerating again so you can see that clearly. Here we go, with a little less exaggeration. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, now I'm doing that in a rather sort of staccato manner, just so you can see clearly what's happening. But let me put a metronome on this for a moment. I'll stick a metronome on it uh, 
at 60. A nice starting place. And let's just see how that fits together. Here we go. One, two. Again, I'm exaggerating a reasonable amount on that so you can see clearly what's happening. Let's just try and make that flow now a little bit better. So I'm making sure I don't stop quite as much. Firstly, I was going like this. Stop, 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 stop. But now, I'm trying not to stop at all. Keeping the baton moving at all times. Okay, let's speed that up a little bit more, I'll just give you one more at 90, let's try that. So again, I'm starting at the top, you'll have noticed that I'm ignoring the preparatory beat, often called the upbeat, we'll deal with that at another point. Here we go, and one, two. something along those lines. This is uh, an attempt to get something which isn't terribly legato but is neither terribly staccato, somewhere in the middle. It's what Max Rudolph calls in his Grammar of Conducting book non-espressivo. And actually I'd just like to show you the diagram that he gives for the non-espressivo pattern. OK, here is Max Rudolph's non-espressivo two-in-a-bar pattern. You can see from the narrowness of that pattern that actually I was exaggerating a little bit too much, perhaps, and uh, going out as much as I was doing to the side to demonstrate that probably gave a little bit too much expression that one doesn't want, of course, in non-espressivo. However, the basic pattern is, is there, and you can see, I think, there's a, there's a number one at the bottom, which is roughly where the first beat occurs. There's a number two here at the sort of midpoint, which is where uh, the second beat occurs. When I say midpoint, uh, that's reasonably low down your body. It's, it's not, not really halfway down the field. This is the top of the field here, so this is quite a long way down. If I turn that over... You can see uh, Rudolf's pattern, which he doesn't like. This is a little bit like me saying, uh, don't bounce the first beat so much th that uh, both beats look the same. His isn't quite as big, the second beat, but it's not far off. So one down there, and then two, and really they're going to both look really rather similar. And you can see the words here, too far, too far. Let me just show you one other thing which may not have been at all apparent from what I showed earlier. In that, when one gets faster, beating faster time, the beat usually gets smaller. Let's just set, or let's set a hundred, so just a little bit faster than we were. Here's two time again at a hundred beats per minute. And one, two. Now, if I try and do that as big as I was doing before, it starts to get quite vigorous. If I do it too small, it feels terribly timid. So there's somewhere in the middle which is a sort of not terribly, uh, not terribly vigorous, neither terribly timid, fairly neutral. That's what we're after all the way around. And remember not to bounce up like this, but one. so you bounce just a little way up so that the one and two are very clearly different. If I go back to what I was beating when it was 60 beats in a minute, hopefully I'll beat a little bit bigger. I think I'm generally beating a little bit big in the feeling that I need to show you very clearly what's going on. Hope you can see something of that. 
And I'd suggest you get yourself a metronome if you don't have one, set it at a certain speed, and direct away. If you have a mirror, that's always a good thing to look at to see how it's looking, or you can, uh, in the dark, as, it's, uh, as it is now for me, I could stand side on to that window over there and I could see very clearly what I looked like uh, from the side because of the, the darkness outside. Um, the final thing to say really is that this needs to become automatic. The ability to go one, two, one, two, and of course the other beats later needs to become automatic. You need to be able to, um, I don't know, talk about the weather. I do, after all, live in the UK, in London, and this has, I believe, been one of the wettest Januaries ever. Uh, incredible amount of rain. Every day there's been rain. There's been flooding all over the country. Uh, I'm very lucky where I live. Uh, you know, a little bit up on the hill, so that I'm starting to waffle. But hopefully that beat stayed pretty constant through that chatting. It's the sort of thing you need to be able to do, walk around and comfortably beat your pattern. So that when you have other things to deal with, it's not interfered by those other thoughts and other needs. Final thing to say is just to think a little bit more about this 3D business, which perhaps I should have talked about a little bit more uh, today than I have done. I mentioned it in one of the earlier videos, but that is Make sure that your arm is not too far out in front of you, nor too close into your side. If it's into your side like this, it's like you're being terribly apologetic and, and, and don't really want to conduct anybody. If you have it right out in front like this, it looks strange and s sort of out of balance and potentially actually slightly aggressive because you're so far in front of you. You have your arm slightly at, slightly bent so that it's still away from your side, your elbow is still well away from your side and you're not touching here but it's certainly not straight like this. Something in that, uh, something of that amount. Again, that is a basic position. There are times when you might want to push further forward <laughs> there are times when you might want to pull back, but we're dealing with the basic position from which we can go to all sorts of other positions. Thank you for watching. I'll deal with three time in the next video.